Hello everybody. So today I've got an interesting lace pattern to show you. Um, now I've been looking online for some inspiration and I came across some lace patterns with knit and purl stitches and I thought, ooh, that's a bit different to be uh, doing on the knitting machine. I thought, I wonder if I could combine the garter carriage and the lace carriage together. And sure enough, you can. And um, this doesn't work for all hand knit lace patterns with knit and purl stitches. Um, but some of them will work out like this one. So before we start, I just thought I'd talk about converting the hand knit charts into a brother chart because the brother machine needs to know which carriage is doing what and on what row it needs to do it. And if we just took, for instance, this chart and input it into the console of the machine or punched it out on a card, um, neither of the two carriages would know what to do at the right time. So we have to adjust the length of the um, of the chart so that each carriage will know what to do at which time. And I'll explain more about that in a minute. But first, I've got two examples here of um, a knit pearl lace pattern that would work using the method I'm going to show you in this video and one that wouldn't. And in fact, it's pretty impractical to knit on a knitting machine. You would probably need a garter bar um, for that particular design. Um, but this particular design will work. And the reason it will work is because the stitches are consistent from the beginning of the design to the end of the design. There are no extra increases, so that one will work. These circles here are the yarn overs or yarn forwards, and they're created by transferring stitches, or in this case, knit two together and slip slip knit in the hand knit version. But here we would have a doubled up stitch on the machine and then an empty needle next to it. So um, that is why this will work because the eyelets are created by transferring stitches in the middle of a row instead of an extra yarn over making an increase and then decreasing stitches later, which is what this particular pattern does. And although it's very nice, but this wouldn't be very practical to do on the machine. And as I said, it wouldn't work with the method I'm going to show you in this video. You can see here where we have no stitch are these grey areas or purple areas here. And um, basically you just ignore those and move on to the next stitch. Because if you, if you can see, we cast on 17 stitches with this particular pattern and it gradually increases up to 23 stitches and it eventually goes back down to 17. So we know that this pattern has increases in the middle of the row and we can't do that on the machine using the lace carriage anyway. Um, we would have to move the entire bed of stitches that we have cast on um, using like a garter bar for instance and move them out um, altogether to create extra needles in the middle of the row. So this design is too complex for this particular method I'm going to show you. Now there are many different knit pearl lace patterns on the internet that you can find. Um, they're also available in books and a lot of them will work. Some of them won't work or are very difficult to do. They're more manipulation than they're probably worth, to be honest, and you might as well just hand knit them. So moving on, um, this is the pattern that I'm going to be showing you to knit in the video today. So it's a variation on a basket weave pattern. We've got the garter stitch blocks there, and then we've got the stocking stitch blocks with a bit of multi-transfer lace. Although typically, um, basket weave patterns have reverse stocking stitch, so the purl side and uh, stocking stitch, the knit side, um, the two alternate. Um, but they can be garter stitch as well, like in this example here. But anyway, that was irrelevant, I digress. So, um, this is the original hand knit version that was provided with the hand knit chart, and this is the version knitted on the brother with the garter carriage combined with the lace carriage. Now, I knitted this sample in cotton, so it has a lot more definition. It's probably more rigid than this sample that was hand knitted. This was probably made with wool or something. 
but um, you can see it's the same pattern. So I wanted to talk about the chart. So this is going to probably be a bit much to take in because it's quite complicated. It's easy when you know how, but it's it's probably going to sound really baffling. Um, so I'll try my best not to make it sound too confusing for you. So this is the original hand knit chart, as you can see. We have the knit two togethers going up here. And then we have the slip slip knits going up that way. So of course, halfway up the chart, it changes direction. So all these knit two togethers here, all these stitches are going to lean to the right because knit two together is a right leaning decrease. And when we get halfway up the chart and the, the eyelets change direction, we have the slip slip knits and that is a left leaning decrease. And these here, we have the plain rows and the dots there. Those are the garter stitch squares. And of course, all these plain squares around it will just be stocking at. Now, when we've transferred it to a brother chart, it's still 12 stitches wide, like the original hand knit chart, but it's now become 90 rows long instead of 20 rows long. And the reason for that being is the lace carriage and the garter carriage have the timing belt. Now, when the lace carriage goes back and forth and when the garter carriage goes back and forth that it will advance the chart one row at a time each direction you go so you need to incorporate that into your chart so although this is actually 90 rows long it's still only doing this same 20 rows of pattern um the extra rows are just incorporated to compensate for the garter carriage two rows of knitting and all the transfer rows for the lace carriage. So if we look at this closely, you can see our garter carriage, or Gemma Collins there, <laughs> is gonna start on the right and the lace carriage is gonna stay on the left and they'll both stay in those positions. Now, um, from row one on the chart here, we begin with the garter carriage and we knit two rows, which advances the chart two rows and knits physically two rows. The following rows here, where these diagonal dots are, are lace transfers and the chart will advance but no knitting will take place. The knitting only takes place in these areas here where those five dots are in a line. So our knit two together is a right leaning decrease so in order to transfer stitches to the right, um, we need to first come across with a plain row and then the lace carriage needs to go from right to left selecting needles for then on the following row, come over back to the right to transfer them, which transfers them to the right. So we need to incorporate those extra rows into the design, which is what we've done here. So after the two rows of the garter carriage, the lace carriage comes in from left to right and does absolutely nothing. And when it goes back this way, from right to left, it selects these needles. Of course, it will be repeated across. Then when it goes from left to right, it transfers those stitches from the row before that are selected, which moves them to the right. And then so on, back and forth, selecting needles. And it does this five times because you can see here, these stitches here need to move in. We're sort of doing it a bit backwards. We've knitted those two rows of garter stitch and now we need to do those transfers. So um, that stitch needs to move to there, that one to there, that one to there, that one to there, and finally that one to there, which is five transfers, leaving that space empty. That needle will be empty, creating a yarn over or an eyelet. Um, so basically, we've got our two knit rows there. And then we've got our multi-transfers here. And these additional rows are um, for the lace carriage and garter carriage. So here you can see, when we've selected needles, 
there going from right to left. This next row is plain and that transfers them to the right, those last group of stitches there. And now we need the lace carriage to go back to the left, so we've got an extra row there and then in turn tells the um, memo display on the console um, it comes up with a number two saying now it's time to knit two rows. So then these extra two rows here for the garter carriage and so on. And of course when it changes direction we don't need that extra row there, this row here before those transfers because those stitches are now going to lean to the left on the next part of the chart which are those slip slip knits. So after we've knitted those two rows with the garter carriage, as we come from left to right with the lace carriage, we will select these needles here. And on that plain row going back, it will transfer them going to the left, making the left leaning decreases. But the multi-transfer principle I've just explained is exactly the same. Um, but that's basically it. Um, it's quite difficult to explain. It's it's easy enough to do. It just requires a bit of thinking to know how many extra rows you're going to need in there um, from your chart. Um, if you're having any difficulty um, converting hand knit charts into um, lace, ch any any lace charts actually, they don't have to be knit and pearl ones. But if you find a nice hand knit lace pattern that you want to translate and knit with the brother lace carriage, um, and you're struggling how to convert it, um, then please do send me an email and I will do it for you. Um, I'll put my email in the description box below and uh, hopefully that will help you out if you get stuck. Um, you can actually email me anytime you want. Um, I'm always happy to help, um, to the best of my knowledge anyway. But yes, that's basically it. So that's the complex stuff out of the way. So next we'll get on to actually knitting this pattern, shall we? Now it's very important, it's imperative actually, that you put the extension rails on because the lace carriage and the garter carriage are both having the timing belt attached. So you can't have both carriages on the bed at the same time, only one carriage on the needle bed at any one time. So I've cast on for this small sample I've got 50 stitches in work here, so I'm on 25 left to 25 right. It's up to you how you want to cast on. Um, you can do what I've done here if you're going straight into the lace pattern, whereas you cast on with your waist yarn, hang your comb, knit a few rows, and then knit a row of ravel cord before casting on with your main yarn. Um, if you're doing any sort of rib ribbing or um, some sort of an edging type thing, um, you can start with that with your main yarn but it's best not to just cast on and knit a row and then go straight into the lace because the lace carriage doesn't tend to like that you can either drop stitches or jam the carriage up and that's not fun and um, so it's best just to be cautious and then um, if you're going straight into the lace like i am here cast on with waist yarn first and knit a row of ravel cord so you can separate it later from the cast on of the main yarn now, because I use my main carriage to do that, I need to release it from the bed. But because I've got the garter carriage and the lace carriage on the extension rails of either end of the machine, I'm just going to turn the change knob to CR and release the carriage from the machine. Now, we need to cast on. Now, remember, remember that what I said, that the lace carriage needs to stay on the left and the garter carriage needs to stay on the right. So... We're going to cast on using the automatic cast on with the garter carriage and then knit one row and we'll be back on the right hand side. So um, I'll do that now. I won't go into too much detail on how to do this because I have discussed it before. But basically you want your electronic machine switched on. Um, if it's an earlier version than this 970, make sure that the ready light is on and um, no pattern is programmed. Um, if it's a punch card machine, make sure you've got a garter stitch punch card, um, just a plain garter stitch. Um, insert into the machine and lock on a plain row. And then um, to cast on, we're going to have both these top levers to the right. So the top one's on C, the middle one is on the left and right directional arrows, and um, the bottom one is to the right arrow, which has the little 
swirly E-wrap looking things underneath it. Um, we have the row counter set on one. I'm going to thread the carriage. Make sure you move it up and down after you close that gate to make sure that it's not caught up. And uh, I'm just going to press the green button and it will automatically cast on by doing an E-wrap uh, from right to left. Okay, um, now I've cast on, we have our E-wrap there. Um, I'm just going to knit a plain row back and for that we don't need to alter any settings apart from these two levers on the carriage here. We need to set the top one to G and um, the middle one on the two turn marks. And because our row count is still set on one, um, we just press go and uh, it will knit back to the right, um, just doing a plain row, no patterning. Just a quick thing to note with this pattern, um, when you're using the garter carriage and lace carriage um, in conjunction with each other, um, make sure you don't use the G-point cams um, because they'll interfere with the lace carriage. So if you do want to use them, make sure that you only use them when you're using the garter carriage and when it comes time to use the lace carriage, remove them because they will um, get jammed up with the lace carriage. So we've cast on with the main yarn and knitted one row and we're back on the right with the garter carriage. Um, so we're just going to lift the carriage up and slide it onto the extension rail out of the way. And then we're going to program the pattern. So hopefully you can see this. Um, now the backlight on my 970 CV1 console is on its way out. So that's why it has these black streaky marks on it. Um, but it still works fine, but hopefully it doesn't interfere with um, what I'm trying to show you. Um, now, if you're using a punch card machine, make sure you take out your cast down card, which is the garter stitch card, and put in the punch card for this pattern. Um, on other machines, just program it in exactly the same way that you would program any lace pattern. But I just thought I'd take the opportunity to show you on the 970, because you don't get to see that too often. So... Um, here we have the main menu and I'm going to go into this little icon here which has the arrow, the flower and the picture of the sweater front. Press enter. And then we want this first icon here, the one with the arrow and the flower. Press enter. Now when it asks which carriage we're using, um, we're not actually going to tell it that we're going to use either of these two carriages. We're going to tell it we're just using the main carriage and that will stop the console on the 970 shouting at us when we use the wrong carriage. Now I'm going to click the icon of the three flowers for an all over pattern. As for the pattern number, which is 908. My number eight button's a little bit temperamental. and press enter. Now it uh, asks us where we want to position the pattern on the needle bed. So this says left six, or in other words, yellow six, and it will repeat to green six, or in this case, right six. So it's centered on the machine. The pattern's 12 stitches wide, and it's going to knit from six on the left to six on the right. So that's fine, yes, yeah, so, so we'll enter. It gives us a little picture of the pattern. We can move the cursor across. And see what it's going to look like but because it's a small repeat it doesn't really make much difference so we press enter and we go back to the main menu now we're going to go into the first icon here with the one two three press enter now it's saying it's on row counter number two well i've knitted one row so i'm going to enter one and enter i'm going to scroll across to the second icon which has the flower the arrow and the one two three and that's the pattern row number, which it's on one, so that's where we want it. That's the start of the pattern. Basically, row one of the chart. So we'll press enter. And then finally, we'll go over to this picture of the sweater here with the flower on it. And that's our knitting room. And we have to be on this screen when we're 
knitting a pattern that's basically like your ready light on other brother electronic machines so uh, our row counter is registered one because we've uh, knitted one row already we're on the first row of the pattern and it shows us here where we are on the needle bed so that's left 20. But you can move it across if you want to so now i'm going to bring the garter carriage into position pull it along until it stops and then the, lift the front and we'll bring it past the position sensor here and you'll notice that the row counter has also changed to two because this will be beginning the second row now and we'll place that down now the settings on the carriage don't need changing as we already altered it for knitting that plain row but we do however need to set the row counter to two because this chart has two rows at the beginning of it as you can see here we need to knit these two rows here that's a plain row and that one has the garter stitch on it which uh, those areas there will re be reformed as knit stitches and that's the only time we'll need to refer to the chart there so now we just press go and let it knit these first two rows of the pattern. So that's the first two rows knitted and now it's time to use the lace carriage but first very very important that we take the garter carriage, lift it up, slide it right off the bed onto the extension rails. That is very important. And now we can bring the lace carriage onto the needle bed. Notice we have the control lever here on the lace carriage set to N for normal lace. You can see what's happened here already. We've got a couple of plain rows and then we've got the five stitches there that have been reformed to knit stitches because these are going to be the garter stitch areas. But for now it's time to use the lace carriage and just watch the um, control panel on the machine because if you've entered the memo information as I indicated on the chart, um, when you finish using the lace carriage, number two will appear here on the 970. Um, if you're using a different electronic machine, there'll be a little memo display on the electronic console and that will also say two, meaning to knit two rows, you finish with the lace carriage. Um, if you're using a punch card machine, you'll need to mark the little turnaround marks like you would with any lace card so you know when it's time to knit the plain rows. So now we're just going to do the lace transfers until the number two appears on the memo window. Hopefully you can see there's a number two. Now I know I'm finished with the lace carriage and it's time to use the garter carriage. Once again, I must stress the lace carriage needs to be completely off the bed and onto the extension rails before we introduce the garter carriage back onto the needle bed. Make sure you always lift it up by the way and hold it down here so that it catches on the bed properly and it's easy to uh, put on. So now we're going to set the garter carriage to knit two rows. You may want to pull some of the slack down behind the tension mast if there's a lot of slack in the take-up wire. So once you've adjusted that, just um, set the row counter to two and knit the two rows. After it's knitted the two rows, once again, garter carriage completely off the bed onto the extension rail. Now we can bring in our lace carriage for the uh, transfers. Completely off the bed 
onto the extension rail. And then you can bring in the garter carriage. Check for slack behind the tension mast. Set for two rows and continue in this manner. So now I'll give you an overall shot of what's going on, but I'll speed it up so you can see the process more efficiently. <laughs> So before long you'll start getting a fabric that looks like this. You see you've got your garter stitch squares or rectangles, you've got your bit of fashion lace there and it sort of makes a nice wavy design. But that's all you do is lift the garter carriage and slide it onto the extension rails after it's knitted its two rows. Bring the lace carriage in onto the bed and do your transfers. Until we have number two on the memo window. Take the lace carriage right off the bed onto the extension rails before we bring the garter carriage back in. And that is all there is to it. Pull down the slack. And set for two rows and knit them. So knitting this knit pearl lace design is no different than any other lace pattern that you would knit with the main carriage and lace carriage. The only difference is that when the garter carriage is on the needle bed, the lace carriage is on the extension rail. And when the lace carriage is on the needle bed, the garter carriage is on the extension rail. Because both carriages use the belt and only one carriage can be on the belt at one time, otherwise you may damage your machine. So uh, basically that's all there is to it. So I'll post a photo at the end of this video of the uh, finished lace pattern. And yeah, I hope you get to try this. So uh, thanks very much for watching. And uh, hope you enjoyed. Hope we get to try it out soon. Take care.